Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special bonus episode of Gossip About Gossip. We are coming to you live from Atlanta, and I am joined by another one of the Swirl Labs team members. Um, this is Nana Asilfi Kondia, who is on our development team, our software engineering team. And um, Nana, what first of all, what brings you here to Atlanta today? Uh, yeah, I guess just taking advantage of, you know, um, distributed working styles and uh, being able to see family and friends during this time. Yeah. Great. And also getting to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So today we are going to talk about um, Hedera's journey to EVM compatibility. I know this is something that, um, you know, has been uh, an ongoing progression. Right. It's something that has been started, you know, a, a number of months ago. But tell us, um, how did we start on that and where are we today? Yeah, um, so I definitely have to give, you know, um, props to Lehman and everybody else that started. From the very beginning, I believe Hedera had support for smart contracts. We used a tool, an internal tool called uh, Ethereum J that gave you support for the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, but that had its limitations. But also I think then as a company, we were focused more on sort of Hedera itself and given the additional value that we saw on top of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, but, you know, as Lehman likes to say, he wants it uh, so that you can sort of carve your own space out in the world. Right. And what that means is that whichever way you do it, we want to enable you to do that. And so we started the journey where um, a couple of key players, you know, I, I'd call up Richard Bear and, and Dan O'Farrell, and, you know, came in and were able to uh, look at the situation and say that, you know, we can reach scale with smart contracts. Um, and so we had a revamp from smart contract version one to two. Um, we brought in a new EVM. We moved from Ethereum J over to Hyperledger's Besu. And we're able to get to the point where we can say, you know, when the clients upgrade on the Ethereum network, we can also take in those same upgrades and provide smart contract developers, you know, the same experience that they would expect on other EVM compatible chains. Yeah. And that obviously opens up a much larger pool of developers, right, who yeah. are experienced and, and know what they're doing there. And um, like you said, you know, they may want their certain flavor of it. They may want some of the benefits that Hedera brings, but yeah. obviously um, make that ramp up for them much easier. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're still on the belief that, you know, that there are native scenarios where it's, it's better, for example, to do um, token management on the native side. So Hedera token service still gives you a lot more feature functionality, um, but for many practices, it, it might be useful to somebody to start off or continue a certain flow through smart contracts and in, even in some cases, uh, utilize the native um, abilities. But if you, know, if, you, if you just wanna do smart contracts, you can do smart contracts, but the additional feature functionality is always there for you through Hedera token service and other services that we offer as well. And what's the feedback that we've gotten from developers so far? So how easy is it really today? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely say that we haven't got it perfect yet, but we're, we're working on it, right? Um, the, the nature of the field is it's complex already. Yeah. Um, and so you would imagine that it's not, there's not five ways of doing something, there's almost 500 ways of doing something, right? And so um, I think we've gotten good feedback in the sense that um, developers have, have highlighted that you know, we were able to cover the basics, get you running really quickly. Um, I think we turn around with feedback quickly as well. Um, and we're, you know, we're making progress on, on all the things that the EVM does offer. And we have, we have our roadmap, we have our goals, and, and we're trying to put that in line with community feedback. And can you share anything in terms of what is on the roadmap? I know our community is um, very engaged and very vocal. Are there certain things that they're, they've asked for, you know, now that sort of the, the basics are in place? Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because there's the, the concepts of uh, Ethereum compatibility and Ethereum equivalence. Uh, the community has asked for Ethereum equivalents. And really what that means is whatever happens on the EVM that say Ethereum could do, whenever they're using the EVM on Hedera, they want to be able to do the same. 
And so whereas we may have done things and you know blocked it before, we need to open that up. And so okay. um, what's in the pipeline is you know pushing from Ethereum compatibility to equivalence. So um, you know at the low levels, if there are opcodes that are supported on the EVM that we didn't before, we're now you know upgrading the system to be able to handle those things. And like I said, to be able to get to the point where you can take any smart contract from Ethereum, bring it over, and, and you'd be good there. Um, I think we've also provided things like uh, the JSON RPC API, which basically allows any developer tools that are, are sort of conventionally used in the Ethereum space to be able to point to Hedera as they would before okay. and to continue to be used there. So that's that's in the pipeline. We've made some progress. You know, we have some support for things like, you know, hard hat and truffle. Um, and, we, you know, we're working through those. Uh, we have examples on, on the open source repos. And so making progress there. And those those are coming through on the roadmap, yeah. And is it really sort of driven by what the community is asking for first? It feels like there's 500 things you can do. Yeah, I think I think this is the unique part of, of Hedera as well, right? We have our governing council, we have our community, and we even have our internal engineers. And I think finding that consensus, as it were, between all of these parties is, is what's important and seeing where there's an overlap. And of course, we have big player partners who uh, will highlight what's most important to them. And so, you know, our product management team does, does a really good job in terms of figuring out what the right sort of combination is, what the schedules look like there. But all of these sources are incorporated, community feedback, you know, the council memberships and also our partners as well, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's important to get that diversity of opinions, right? Otherwise, you may build a product that down the road you realize, wait, perhaps it doesn't either scale as an enterprise would need, or perhaps it doesn't meet the needs of certain kinds of developers. Exactly, so, yeah, yeah. I'm and sure I, it takes a little longer, but... It, it does, yeah. In, in some cases, it does. And then, you know, sometimes you just have some brilliant ideas from the community where it's like, oh, we thought this would take two months, but it's actually two weeks based off of this person's idea. And so that diversity and thought also comes through. I think the... Um, Hedera improvement proposal um, flows are also really good there, where, you know, like other chains, we're able to both internally put out, you know, propositions as to what we should do, but also take requests from the community and say, hey, you know, the network should do this. And how do we all, you know, distributor across the world, think about this idea and, and go, go at it. Yeah. yeah. And what are some of the ways that you engage with the community? I know we've talked to projects and they talk about, you know, sort of how we engage with Hedera, what's that like on the other side as you engage with community members? Yeah, it's, 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 um, I'd say there are multiple avenues. Um, some of them are technology and some of them are, you know, from the people themselves. Um, and so because we are open source, of course, as, I think as an engineer, I get to engage with the community just through our tickets, right? Uh, whether yeah. it's the PRs themselves or the issues that get opened up. There's also Discord. Um, I know we have you know, Stack Overflow as well, but also we have a lot of uh, developer advocates that are doing amazing things and you know, the developer rel team as well. And so they bring in a lot of that information as well as our product teams. And so uh, when it's necessary to get on calls or get together, we'll do that. Um, and you know, I, think, I think we're using technology in the right places to open, open these doors up of communication. Yeah. Good. And you know, as you look, well, before I before I go there, you know, give us a little peek into sort of day in the life of you and your team and you know what you what you end up doing most of the day. We know we know there's a lot of calls. We're, we've had to figure out a time in, in the time that you're here to even schedule this session. Um, but you know, what is most of your day like? It's definitely not the same every day. So um, our team focuses on, uh, I like to call it smart contract uh, development experience, um, highlighting that it's not just one product, it's the experience overall. So it's, it's the um, thinking ahead for what does it look like for a developer uh, creating an app on the, on, the, uh, on the network? What does it look like for a user using that app was created on? And so every day is sort of a mixture of whether it's the uh, you know the consensus node itself and how it manages smart contract executions, or whether it's you know the JSON RPC relay and how it um, interacts with other tools that are extracting information from the ledger, or whether it's just you know at the end on when I point my wallet to Hedera and I wanted to you know see the results of this execution, what does that look like? Um, and so every day is either you know starting, you know feature development, you know um, figuring out the issues with bugs, but also just I, I try to get the team or think about it as a 
moving away from a reactionary um, place into like sort of an anticipation space where we can anticipate what you know customers and and the community will go through and kind of get ahead there and say you know if they even do hit an issue it's like yeah we're, we're on that we're getting there or here's the workaround or no we're good you can go ahead you don't have to be worried um so i know i'm trying to i'm trying to answer the question but it's it's, yeah, it's, it's, fine. it's a little different each day yeah um yeah i think that keeps things you know th that keeps your mind excited right yeah, you don't yeah. want to um you don't want to go to work and do the same definitely, thing every day. definitely haven't had a, a boring day at, at <laughs> hedera swirls labs etc yeah yeah um, okay, speaking of, so during your interview process, did you interview with Lehman? I did. And what was that like? That was amazing, actually. It was, um, so I've interviewed a lot at, you know, different companies before and also been on the opposite side of interview. Right. It was just different. Lehman, uh, you know, people say he's a teacher, but he really is a teacher at heart. And yeah. it's, it's so weird within an interview to see that flipping mindset from, I'm not just trying to throw a hard question at you. I actually am interested in what you're thinking about. And then he does this flip within the interview sometimes, you know, I, th I think in ours, it went like that, where he hears you say something and he starts to ponder on it and then becomes like sort of a constructive thing. And I think that's always really powerful because you felt heard, but also you, you it kind of gives you an insight into the company itself and this constructive man uh, management of, you know, ideas and thoughts and, and you know, everybody's thoughts are welcome and, and what does that look like? Um, so, yeah, that was really interesting. I think um, I played with uh, sort of... Uh, uh dags early on but um, in that in that question it was kind of interesting uh even sort of asking the mathematical side of it but also just the application with the within the network as well and your experience before this was all in you know in software companies but mostly web two companies so correct right? correct yeah and so what what drew you to Hedera? Yeah, I think for me, uh, so I come from uh, different places. I, I grew up in England and also uh, my family's originally from Ghana. Um, so I've always had this diversity of thought, right? But I've also seen within the, whether it's the financial system or not, that, you know, there are, there are key players and, you know, for some, for some scenarios, it makes sense to come together and, and you know, maybe put the rules here. But then how do you bring in everybody else's thought? And I think that was what was unique about, you know, whether it's DLT or Web3, just this idea of where it's useful, remove some middlemen, but also bring visibility there, but also just enable the average person. And I think that's what I saw when I came across Hedera. And it just felt like, you know, um, it was different. It felt like it had looked at a problem and, and didn't just look for what does the financial output look like. It looked at the problem and felt like, okay, how does this help people? Right. And then, you know, how do we how do we let them do what they need to do? Because in many cases, you're not always the best person to solve the problem, but you may be the greatest person to enable somebody else to solve that problem. So yeah, that's that's what I felt and that's what we're tripping here. Yeah. Well, and it's amazing to me to see the diversity of use cases that people have built on top of the platform, right? Yeah. Things that you I personally would never have thought of. And so, you know, and opening that up so that anybody can can sort of build their dreams and build their yeah. ideas on top of it is is really fascinating to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything else you would like to share with our community as, as they have you here today? Uh, yeah, I, I, like I'd say, um, just like the people within the, the company, the company itself is very open to thoughts. Uh, my team is hiring. So if you know, um, anybody who's sort of interested in both the, the smart contract side, as it refers to Solidity and, and Web3, but also the Java protocol side, uh, you know, send them our way. Um, but also we're, we're, we're open-minded to lots of thoughts. So the company overall, um, whether it's the feedback from the community through issues, but also just your, you know, your next idea that your next carved out um, idea in space, uh, bring, bring them along. We're, we're, we're here to sort of look at that and work with you on that. And I know you have some openings on your team. What, what kinds of roles are you hiring for? Uh, senior engineers, uh, mainly, and then, you know, we can kind of bump up or down based off the experience. But like I said, our, our team focuses on the experience. And so some components of that are focusing on the, the service and the protocol itself. Others are the JSON RPC relay um, within the Web3 aspect. And, and, you know, some of it is just solidity development as well. Um, but yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and maybe they too will go through the learning process with the interview at, with Lehman. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nana, thank you so much no for joining problem. us today. Um, folks, if you have any additional questions, you know, we will continue to have these discussions with members of the team. So we appreciate you joining us and we hope you um, enjoyed this bonus episode and learned something today. Oh, 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 oh.